Good morning and welcome everyone. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Pastor Paul Dries. I serve as associate pastor here. We also have Pastor Mark Manning, who is not here today, but he is at Hanley Falls helping them out with a worship service there. Special welcome to those of you that are joining us via the live stream. Thank you for joining us and for communion today. If you've never been with us, we have communion right up here. You'll just follow the instructions of the ushers. All are welcome to come and receive communion. With that being said, I would invite you to rise for our gathering hymn, God Who Stretched the Spangled Heavens, number 771. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. 
Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our scripture reading. comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 15, verses 1 through 6. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No, no one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven, and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteous. Thank you. (laughs) Please rise. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Our gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses 32 through 40. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourself that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belts and have them sit down to eat and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. 
you must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I invite our kids forward for a children's message. Yeah, you found me out, didn't you? <laughs> I know it's a little it's a little trick that you learn if you bicycle bicycle long enough. So what do we have right here? A bicycle. A bicycle. How many of you have ridden a bicycle before? Nice, almost all of you. Wonderful. When you first learned how to ride a bicycle, was it fun or was it scary? Or was it both? It was scary. Was it fun, scary? Yeah. Is and, and then the garage door went boom. And the garage door went boom. Oh. Was it <laughs> what about y'all over here? Was that fun or scary for you? Or was wow. fun? It was fun? Oh good, good. Riding a bike, I think, is kind of fun and scary because you're on this thing, right? I like the, I like the deer in it. Sure, yeah, go ahead. We'll get you one that's a little more appropriate for your size at some point. <laughs> this one might be a little bit big for you. <laughs> it's kind of fun, but also, you look at how close this thing is to falling over. It's not very stable. I mean, if, if I just let it go, it's going to fall right over, isn't it? So what, what keeps it going? What keeps a bicycle going? Yeah. When you're going fast. When you pedal, yeah, when you're going fast. When you're pedaling, that's what makes it more stable. Now, I have a question for you. Is it... More stable when you're going slow or more stable when you're going fast? When you're going fast. Isn't that weird? Because when you start off riding a bike, do you immediately want to go as fast as possible? No. no. You want to go kind of slow. Like me and go fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're super stable when you're going that fast. Thank you so much, Benjamin. Yeah, just do, keep doing laps. This is great. It's kind of counterintuitive, isn't it? Because when you want to go, when you're starting off, you want to go slow. You don't want to go fast because it's scary for you. But then once you figure out that you go fast enough, then it feels more stable. Today, we're talking about our relationship with God. And one of the ways that we have a relationship with God is through prayer. And I think prayer is kind of like riding a bicycle, because when you start off, it's kind of scary, and you don't know what exactly to do. But then, as you do it more and more, it feels more comfortable. And just like a bike is more stable, just like Benjamin is more stable when he's moving fast, we do better when we're praying pretty frequently. So let's practice praying. <laughs> I bet it is. Let's, start, let's practice praying right now. Dear God, thank you for bicycles. Thank you for running. Thank you for running. Thank you for joy. Help us to pray. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Y'all can go back to your seats now. I'm going to move this off to the side here. And don't worry, everybody, this is not a multiple-choice sermon like last time, so you, don't, you can participate if you want to, <laughs> but it's not built in. This passage is a challenging one to us. In it, Jesus is saying that God comes like a thief in the night. That's kind of scary, isn't it? <laughs> to think of God coming as a thief in the night at a time when we're not ready, when our house is probably a mess, when we're not expecting visitors, and yet God comes nonetheless. I also think in a way that that is liberating for us, that God coming as a thief in the night 
isn't necessarily just something that should scare us, but that's, that's something that should be exciting, just like riding a bike, <laughs> in my estimation. Because God comes to us as we are. Not at the apex where everything is perfect, where all of the dishes are put away, where the house is well kept, but God comes to us in the middle of the night where we don't have any chance to prepare, where all of our flaws and all of our mistakes and all of our messiness is simply laid bare. When I was a kid, I would climb trees. There's this wonderful tree in the back of our yard that was probably like, I don't know, it was probably like 50, 60 feet tall. And I could get up about, I'd say like 20 to 30 feet off the ground, probably a little farther than I should have been <laughs> off the ground. But in this time, you know, before everyone was having cell phones and all of that fun stuff, I, I would, after school, I would often be sick of interacting with people because I was very much an introvert and I, I didn't quite grow into the extroversion I have now. But I would go up into this treehouse my dad had built and then I would keep climbing up and keep climbing up until I was about 10 feet or so above the, above the treehouse, which was about 15, 20 feet off the ground. And I would just sit there. And for me, that was a wonderful escape. It kind of had a mix of a danger and some fun in there. Thankfully, I never fell from that tree. Otherwise, I might not be <laughs> preaching in front of you today. <laughs> but something about that time in that tree changed me. Initially, I was just doing it for fun and to, and to be farther away from people, but eventually that became a sort of prayer practice for me where I would sit in the tree and I could feel the wind blowing on my face, see cars going underneath. And it was a space where I really felt one with God. And that time in the tree changed me in a way. It changed me in a way that I wasn't really expecting. Because when I was a child, I had a very legalistic faith. <laughs> Meaning, I thought a lot of myself. I thought, you know, not all the other kids are praying like I'm praying. Not all the other kids are reading their Bible like I'm reading my Bible. Not all the other kids are providing perfect answers in confirmation like I'm providing perfect answers and confirmation. I was very self-righteous, I would say now. <laughs> I thought that the way to please God was to kind of put down everybody else. I thought that the way to please God was to make sure that I was the best, that I followed the laws as closely as I possibly could, and that I made other people aware when they weren't following the laws as closely as I was didn't really make me a lot of friends. <laughs> As you can imagine, such legalism usually doesn't do that. That was my conception of God, is that God was a rule maker and that my job was to follow the rules as, as closely as possible. And anytime somebody violated those rules, a peer or someone that I didn't know very well, my job was to tell them what they did wrong. <laughs> Again, not the best way to win a popularity contest. <laughs> not the best way to get other people to like you. Certainly a good way to make yourself feel full of yourself, have a lot of ego about it. And so when I went into the tree, I would often ref reflect on all of those ways that I felt like I was better than everyone else. That time in the tree, though, did a, it did a funny thing to me. It did something that I wasn't quite expecting. It softened me. I joke often that I'm slowly becoming more and more <laughs> like my mom. <laughs> One of the things that my mom said early on to me, and it just showed me again and again, is that God is love, that God's mercy is more important than God's law. And as a kid, I would hear this and think, well, my mom has it wrong. <laughs> Clearly, we should be paying attention to the law. Clearly, we should be focusing on how we are better than other people. And yet, that time in the tree, that time where I'm sitting, looking down every once in a while, thinking that is a pretty far fall, isn't it? And then feeling the wind on my face, hearing it rumple the leaves. That time softened me. It changed me from focusing on God and the law to focusing on God 
and mercy. I went from being incredibly judgmental, from being a person who was a know-it-all, being a person who read their Bible not for the sake of joy, but rather out of a penance, from being a person who is eager to answer all of the pastor's questions exactly right, to being a person who wasn't as concerned with doing that for the wrong reasons, but instead was focusing on the right reasons for doing that, answering out of joy instead of out of legalism. Reading my Bible to hear the stories about God's mercy for us instead of reading the Bible to hear about stories about how everybody else is wrong and I'm right. That time in the tree transformed me. Looking back, I would call that prayer. <laughs> I would call that meditation. I maybe didn't use those words at the time. But that time with God, where I just had my heart open very much, softened me. It helped me to listen to the suffering of others. It changed my mind from thinking of myself as the best <laughs> to thinking of myself as a child of God, just like everybody else is a child of God and how I'm not any better or any worse. God comes to us as we are. Jesus describes in today's passage how that might be like a thief in the night. When I was a kid, I, I read this passage and I thought that means that we have to be as legalistic as possible. We have to be as precise as possible. That we have to show the other people what they're doing wrong with their lives. <laughs> and now, after spending that time in the tree, after hearing about so many stories of suffering from other people, I view this story in a different light. I don't view it just as God as a legalist, but rather I view it as God coming to us as we are before we have a chance to fix everything up, before we have a chance to make our house just so, before we have a chance to clean out the garbage, to take out the recycling. God comes to us as we are. That is terrifying in a way, and I think also beautiful. Today we're celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion, a chance for God to come to us as we are, not as a perfect human being, not as somebody who has done everything just to the letter of the law, but as flawed human beings, as we all are. This message of grace changed my life. It changed my outlook. It changed me from focusing on what other people were doing wrong to focusing on what I could do to serve other people. And for me, that version of Christianity has given me so much hope and so much love and has given me so much meaning in a time where maybe Christianity isn't always viewed in the most favorable light. This sacrament is a holy gift to us, not something that we can earn, not something that we deserve, but something that is given to us freely, just like that sacrament of baptism is given to us freely as infants. It's not something that we can earn. God's mercy is for us as we are. Even though we sin, even though we make mistakes, that mercy is still for us. God gives us this mercy so that we can go out and live lives, not pointing the finger at other people, explaining how we are right and they are wrong, but instead extending our hands out to other people, asking how we can help so in turn they can help us and we can all be better for it. Thanks be to God for this mercy. Thanks be to God for this grace. Thanks be to God for these sacraments which we are about to celebrate. Amen. Our hymn for the day is Blessed Assurance, number 638. You can also see it on the screens.
invite you to rise as we confess the creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. God, let your loving kindness be upon your church. Fill all who proclaim the gospel with your spirit. Equip your flock to speak your word of promise and hope in the midst of fear and uncertainty. Merciful God. God of rain, God of whirlwind, we give thanks for these rains that water your crops, that water our gardens, that water our lawns. We give thanks for the cycle of rain. We pray that we would continue to receive rain so that our crops could grow, that our gardens could flourish, and that our lawns could be nourished. Merciful God. God of rest, God of families, God of relaxation, we give thanks for this summer. As summer begins to come to a close, help us to look back with joy on all the time spent visiting cabins, visiting families, staying with friends. We give thanks for this wonderful season of summer. We give thanks for this time of relaxation and pray that it rejuvenates us as we go into the coming year. Merciful God. God of healing, we know that you care for every member of your flock. Every child of God is yours. Today, we lift up for healing those that are especially near and dear to us, including Linda, Grant, Jerry, Joan, Joe, and all those that we name aloud or silently in our hearts at this time. God of rebirth and of new birth, we pray that you would be with our expecting mothers, Hope and Justine, and we pray that you would comfort the family of Mavis Lewis and be near them during this time as they grieve. Be with all of those that we named aloud or silently in our hearts, God. We pray that you would hear all of these prayers. Merciful God.
Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Please be seated as we collect our tithes and offerings. As we do so, we will be singing the God of Abraham praise number 831. Continue with our offering prayer. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. 
and so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts in heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of kind might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of this in remembrance of me. Every time we eat of this bread and we drink of this wine, we proclaim Christ's crucifixion and resurrection until we join him again. At that time, I would invite you to rise as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. I invite our communion helpers forward at this time. Please follow the instructions of the ushers.
somewhat familiar to some of you, we are resuming our in-person, or this is something that's, that's continued to happen, and we are just resume, returning it again to our service. So this is just an in-home communion kit that Rita is going to take to some of our members who are at home. So this is our blessing that we're doing during this time. And I'll, I'll have you hold on to it, and then I'll hold on to it too. <coughs> May this communion be a blessing not only to you, but to all of the people that you serve. May it be a reminder of God's love forever and ever. Amen. We continue with our post-communion prayer. Life-giving God, through this meal, you have bandaged our wound and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our closing hymn is How Great Thou Art. I would invite you to rise as it is comfortable for you.
invite you to be seated for our announcements after that lovely singing. Thank you all for singing so well. You'll notice on your white sheets, I just had three announcements that I wanted to point out. The Welka Lutheran World Relief is collecting 70 and 80 sheet notebooks, so no, no loose leaf paper. Those are for wonderful kits that they're sending out. We would invite you to consider a position on Granite Falls Council in one of the different positions that we have open right now. You can read through those. And then we also invite generous donations to our Casota Stone restoration products. We give thanks project, we give thanks for the over 94,000 that we've already collected towards our goal of 133,000. So thanks to all of you that have donated. If you've been on the fence, now is a great time to donate. We would just ask you to write your checks right in the memo line, Casota Stone, on there. So thank you for your continued generosity on that front. With that all being said, I invite you to hear this benediction. May God bless you and keep you in certainty and in uncertainty, in mercy and in law. May God always look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, love your neighbor. Thanks be to God.